Thanks a lot for coming in. Good morning. Happy to be here. Something about this community appeals to you? This is a wonderful place to live. <laughs> for Kelowna Now, this is Kent Molgat. And we're joined by John Stapovi of eBus. Thanks for coming in, John. Yeah, you bet. Thanks, Kent. This is a big day in the history of busing in Canada. Greyhound is now pretty much out of the game, and we've got companies like yours stepping in to pick up at least part of that. Yeah, so you are one of, I take it, four companies that are picking up some of these routes? Correct. Now, when you guys, when you people in the bus industry take a look at what happened with Greyhound, are you seeing a lot of opportunities in the routes that aren't currently being picked up? Or are we just at a point in time where we have to realize that these just aren't sustainable? I think a little bit of both. Uh, for us, we really need to establish a base. So we've been in Alberta um, with our Red Arrow brand for 40 years. We started eBus in 2011 in Alberta. Took time to grow. Now it's stable, successful. And the timing was right, obviously, with the change in landscape in the, in the industry and inner city transportation. Um, it was time for us to bring a brand into BC. We've had lots of requests over the years from different communities, bring Red Arrow in, bring eBus in. Time was right. So for us, we had to establish that base. These routes we see as kind of the core routes um, in, in the area. Right. Um, and we need to establish that. And once there's a, a good um, following usage, really getting ingrained into the community, then we can look at expansion. And we certainly have interest, um, and we think expansion can come in a few different ways. Could be us, it could be through even a partnership with a smaller regional carrier. So maybe it's right. someone with a 15 passenger bus that does services, say around Penticton, connects with our with our main routes. So right, let, 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 let's go through your main routes then, so yeah. people understand who we're talking to. Your e-bus is going to be going, well you go through it, Kelowna, Kamloops? So yeah, so if you look at it, Kelowna, Vernon, Kamloops, um, then we hit uh, Merritt, Hope, Chilliwack, Abbotsford, Surrey, Vancouver. Okay, and with stops along the way, I take it, because Abbotsford's key with a lot of the lower rate airlines flying out of there, right? Yeah, so we're um, servicing um, Abbotsford Airport and Kelowna Airport. We think that um, there's a good need. Um, both airports have been great to work with. Um, I think both airports have a good sort of regional catchment area, and we think there's a great opportunity to connect the region in, in and out of the airports. Now, um, so I take it you've got the airport pickup, um, are, are you working on having a sort of downtown Kelowna pickup, a West Bank pickup? Yeah, we, we'd uh, love to have that. We're working at it. For us, it was important to start prior to, to Greyhound's exit. We wanted to ensure that these main routes, at least, didn't have any kind of gaps. So it was critical for us. So, you know, timing was tight. There's, you know, BC's regulated, so you have to go through a process and the Passenger Transportation Board um, needs to, you know, assess the companies, ensure they're safe, ensure they're financially viable to operate and to be sustainable. So right. that process took a little bit of time. So we really had to, you know, we sort of joke internally, but we did probably three months worth of work in about 10 days. Right. So we wanted to get up and running. Clone Airport um, is a start. Um, we're working um, with a few different um, folks in the city and, and um, private uh, properties as well to look for those, those secondary spots. We do anticipate having another stop um, in Kelowna somewhere, close to downtown hopefully, and West Kelowna and West Bank area for sure. So when you guys launched in Alberta, you were saying back in the late 70s, mm -hmm. already you differentiated yourselves from your typical Greyhound style of travel, that it was sort of up a notch. Is yeah. that still, is with e-bus, is it the same thing? Are you, you trying to sort of appeal to people you know, as sort of a, uh, w with riding the bus or a coach, maybe is a better word, as more of an upscale thing. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, we definitely like to use the word coach. I think bus is certainly an industry standard and, you know, everyone in the public knows that it's a bus. But for us, you know, our founder in 1979, the reason he started at Red Arrow was to try and really elevate the industry, right? Make people understand and, and learn that it's not you know, old, decrepit buses um, going through all these um, locations. 
these are brand new beautiful motor coaches well outfitted our red arrow service has leather seats and fold down trays two in one seating so our red arrow service really is almost like a business class airline for everybody all 36 people on board have that experience so that was his goal is to try and really really elevate the bus industry put it more in line with the airlines and is an e-bus like a red arrow e-bus is very close to red arrow so in 2011 we introduced e-bus and we saw kind of a gap in the market where people wanted a high quality service good um, good amenities on board so power and wi-fi i think today are are almost a must for anybody traveling everyone wants to be connected um, so we have that on board, but still kind of economical price. So, you know, no frills. So it's almost um, an encore to a WestJet, let's say. Okay. A um, little bit less less uh, frills, um, but we try and maintain that economical price for everybody. Single price point, you get a little bit of a discount when you book online. So we're trying to make it easy for everybody with EBA. Right. Well, um, we heard the government in BC saying that, you know, with the departure of Greyhound, that that uh, these routes are being picked up, like 83% of them are being picked up. And yet when I heard the minister go through the list of, of areas where there's not going to be any bus, it, boy, it seemed like a long list and a lot of areas that aren't going to be covered. But from talking to you, I, I'm not super optimistic that a lot of privately owned companies are going to be jumping in to fill all those voids, are they? Yeah, I mean, I, I think time will tell. I mean, I think... Um in today's sort of world of social media, it's, it's a lot easier to get information out to any business or, or, or anywhere, any municipality, any city. Um, so I think there's probably going to be some gaps for in the short term. And where there's enough demand, where there's true demand, those gaps will be filled. And whether that's by, you know, private sector or public sector, um, in, in BC, we operate BC Bus North. It's a contracted service provided by um, uh, BC Transportation, or BC Transit, I should say, um, and that's in the north. So there was there was a, a gap on the highway of tiers, and they filled that gap, and it's a public-private partnership. So right. there's, there's opportunities to do that. We think technology, so the disruptors, the car shares, um, Pop Ride, for instance, the, the carpool guys, um, companies like that will pick up some routes. So if someone's traveling from, you know, uh, um, Cash Creek, let's say, needs to get to Kelowna, well, maybe there's someone driving already from Cash Creek to Kelowna or to Kamloops. Right. Um, and, and technology can connect those folks. So there's more and more options out there. So we believe long-term we'll see a lot of the gaps filled, maybe in the non-traditional sort of ways and maybe not with 50 passenger motor coaches. But certainly where there's demand, we truly believe um, those voids will be filled. And it may not be daily, it may be three times a week service, but as long as those types of services um, are every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and people know that's six months out when they need to book an appointment, can count on them, it can right. still be successful. You mentioned booking because I take it for some of your sort of secondary drop off and pick up locations that going forward, people are going to have to get in the habit of actually booking. because. For instance, for Vernon, you were saying, you can get on one of your buses, but eventually you'll, you'll be needing to book that in advance. Yeah, so for right now, the first couple of weeks, just again to, to get everyone to understand where pick up and drop off locations are and kind of see our buses running um, through the cities, we'll be stopping at, um, at all the midpoints. But at some point, they'll be um, by reservation only. So certainly encourage people to either book online or over the phone to ensure that we will stop in a Vernon, in a, in a Merritt, in a Chilliwack, places like that. And what about frequency of travel uh, for these trips that, you're, that we're talking about between Kelowna, let's say, and Vancouver? How many options in terms of time of day do I have or time of week? Yeah, so seven days a week for all our services. Um, and basically... Um, twice a day. So you'll have two options to get to Vancouver and two options to get to uh, Kamloops. We launched this morning. We had our first trip leave the Kelowna Airport and we had um, some people arrive um, from Kamloops and Vernon into the airport and we had um, you know about 15 people or so leave the airport heading um, to Vancouver and along the way I, I, some might be getting off of Merritt and other places but 
um, it was good for for the first day. I mean, I think I think people are happy to to see a service. Sure. Right. Do you, now, is there a period of time during which you're going to have to hit some markers in terms of filling those buses to be able to maintain it? Yeah. Again, I think we we see the demand, and I think um, it's going to take a little bit of time. But you know, we also need to work with the community to look at um, folks that are that are driving. Um, to get them out of their vehicles. You know, traveling by coach today is a very different option than, than before. You have power, you have Wi-Fi, you can be productive. You, right. know, you can do your report, email it. Yeah, we talked about this before. You're trying to get people to maybe reimagine taking a bus a little bit. Yeah. That, that, it, that, that a guy could be a business owner, but he, what's, what work is he getting done while he's gripping a steering wheel? Absolutely. He can use Wi-Fi, he can get stuff done and travel in comfort. Yeah, one you, of your coaches. You shouldn't be on the phone when you're when you're driving, right? I mean, distracted driving is terrible. So, it's a lot of unproductive time that we spend in our vehicles. And when we're traveling for you know two, three, four hours, those are two, three, four hours of unproductive time. So, you know, for us, we see in Alberta a lot of a lot of business people, government um, agencies, um, they're traveling by coach because they don't have to deal with airport lineups. You don't need to deal with you know, going through customs and and all those security and taking off your shoes. You know, yeah. we we have your name and your contact information on the manifest, so we always know who's traveling with us. Um, you you come over kind of ten minutes before before it's departure time. That's all the time you need. Right. And and you get going. You have some minds to change on this here, though, don't you? I, I'm trying to picture people in Kelowna getting on a bus, and there aren't too many wearing a nice suit like that. Right. Yeah. It's you you you've got to get a different mindset going. Yeah, and, and we, we do, and again, it's been a 40-year a journey to uh, change the mindset of, of people about the industry, and I think we've been successful in doing that in Alberta. We've got two companies providing you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of people um, every year of, of safe service, and yeah, it's going to take some time, it's going to take some education with an offering like we have, it's it's an elevated offering. It's new buses; they're wheelchair accessible. Um, every single one of our right. buses. So um, we we believe there's um, an opportunity to cater to a very different clientele. Right. It's green. It's comfortable. It's productive time, and it's safe. Absolutely. I think right. you nailed it. All right. I might be getting on a bus soon. I mean, a coach. I hope you do. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, you bet, Ken. John Stepovi, and thank you for watching Kelowna Now.